Hello everyone and welcome to the channel and here's Google Apps Updates Roundup number 86 and in this episode I will show you more than 30 new features in Google Apps so without further ado let's jump in. Let's start with the YouTube app. The first change is the redesigned share sheet now it has a more compact design for easier reachability plus there is a new shortcut for the nearby share which is expected to get renamed to quick share later and this one will save you a couple of steps. In the shorts, we also got a couple of tweaks. First, the camera button at the top got removed because you can simply tap the plus button to create a short. And also the subscribe button got redesigned with a rounded shape instead of the rectangular red button. And this what happens when you tap on it, it will be grayed out and you can tap on it again to unsubscribe if you want. On the web, we also got small change. When you search for anything like Android 15, for example, and then play one of the shorts, you will see this new arrow on the left that includes the same search query you have and tapping on it will take you back to the same search results so you don't have to tap the search bar one more time. The next app is YouTube Music and here we have multiple new changes. The first one is related to the playlists. Now you have the ability to create a custom playlist art using AI and when you open any of your playlists you will see this edit button with a gradient color tapping on it will give you different categories to choose from. So let's say I will go for the colors category and here you have to accept the terms for the first time. So let's tap on accept. Once it finishes, you will immediately see multiple options to choose from in this carousel with the ability to regenerate more if you don't like any of these options. On top of this, you will see the command prompt at the bottom. And when you tap on any of the words, it will give you multiple options which works exactly the same as the AI wallpapers under the style and wallpaper app on Pixel phones. And this is how it looks when you change the words. On top of this, you have the ability to randomize if you don't have anything in mind. And if you are happy with the choice, tap on save and it will be applied to your playlist art. And later down the road, if you decided you want to get back to the original photo you can simply tap on edit and choose original and it will revert back again the second change is under the home feed now we got this new notification button next to the magnifying glass here you will be able to see all the updates from artists you subscribe to and other activities as well i don't have a real life example to show you how the notification looks but on top of this you will also get a suggested for you section it will show you some of the artists you listen to so you can immediately subscribe from here change number three when you tap on the comments button from the now playing screen it will minimize it and instead of showing a floating card over the now playing screen like before and this one looks a bit nicer and lastly google pushed the winter recap that you can access from the profile menu then your recap and you'll find it at the top when you tap the play button it will show you the stats in a story like interface as expected and it will automatically play your top song that you can mute from this button next google photos and the first change is under the albums i started to see this new description bar that you can add whatever description you want for the album so i will type here magic eraser example photos and when you tap on the tick sign it will save the description like this and later if you want to edit the description you can tap and hold and it will give you the option to edit it like this on top of this now you have some extra settings for the highlights section you can remove it completely if you want and when you tap on edit it will give you the chance to select what photos to show in the highlight which is in other words it's just a memory for this album and you have a toggle here to auto select the photos if you want to do it automatically and if you follow the news you will know that google decided to push a lot of the google photos ai features to everyone that includes older pixel models ios devices and other android devices all together and one of these top features is the magic editor I didn't get any of them on my Pixel devices yet or other Android devices to show you, but I will definitely keep you posted in my future episodes. Now let's talk about the Gmail app. The first change is the new unsubscribe button that you will find next to the sender name, and that will make it much easier for you and instead of looking for the very tiny unsubscribe button in the body of the email, but from here you can immediately unsubscribe like this. 
Plus, you get the ability to report as a spam once you unsubscribe. The second change is the redesigned animation for the predictive back gesture. If you have the feature activated under developer settings, as you see here, it looks slightly different than before. Next, Google Chrome. The first change, when you open any blank page, you will see this redesigned tap switcher that includes discover and following. This is not a new feature, but the tap switcher itself got redesigned. You have here a settings button as well, so you can manage some settings like activity, interests, hidden, and following. You can also uh, follow any website by opening the article and then tap the ellipses, and you will find the follow button at the very end. When you tap on it, it can automatically include all the stories from this website under the following tab like this. And if you want to unfollow the website later, you can tap the ellipses and you will see unfollow over here. The second change is under the sync settings. Now you have the ability to choose what exactly to sync with your devices. So instead of syncing everything using this toggle, you can turn it off and choose individual items, which will give you more flexibility. On top of this, when you scroll down, you will see a new encryption menu that will allow you to choose between Google's default encryption for the passwords or use your own passphrase to encrypt all Chrome data in your Google account. Then you have the ability to review your synced data and this one will show you how many items per category is synchronized with your Google account. In addition to the ability to clear all your Chrome data from your Google account using this button. The third and last change is on the desktop version. Now when you access the side menu, you will no longer see a drop down list to choose between different options like the reading list, customize panel and so on. But all you get now is this new pin button. Tapping on it will pin the bookmarks to your uh, navigation bar at the top that you can access quickly by tapping on this button. But if you want to customize your Chrome, you will see another floating button at the bottom right corner. Next, Google Play Store. And the most notable change is the removal of the search bar completely. And now it got replaced with a search tab. When you go there, you will find four main categories, discover, you might like, explore games and explore apps. Tapping on any of these options will simply do a search to show you the results. And you have some recommendations here under discover. Another pro tip, if you want to search for something yourself, then instead of stretching your finger all the way up, you can simply tap on the same magnifying glass one more time. And if you are in a different page, give it a double tap and it will do the same thing. But for some reason, when you go to the books tab, the search bar is still there, which is kind of weird. I'm not sure if Google will include it under search in the future or not. Another thing you might notice when you open any app listing, you will find the navigation bar at the bottom is now prominent. So you can easily navigate between pages and get quick access to the search regardless where you are. And based on this new change, you will notice some visual tweaks at the top bar. And here's a side by side comparison with the previous version. First, we got this new Play Store icon at the top left corner. The Play Points shortcut is now permanent and it doesn't disappear like before and that will make it slightly easier for you. Overall, visually, it looks better in my opinion, but you might need more time to get used to it. And lastly, I started to see this pop-up showing in any app I open, and there is a new update available for this app, and you can immediately finish the update from here. I saw this previously in Google's own apps, but this is the first time to see it in third-party ones, so I'm not sure if this new change is related to Android 15 that I'm using on my Pixel 8 Pro, or this is something for all Android phones. Now let's talk about the Google Home app. Under automations, when you create a new routine and then choose personal and then tap on add an action, now you have the ability to get the wellness info and it has the new tag next to it. When you go inside, you can ask your smart device to give you more information about your stats like the step count, distance, calories burned, days exercised, and the access is from the Fitbit app as you see here and the other one will give you the sleep data, including the hours slept and the sleep start time. Google Messages also got a small tweak and now the text field is back to one line only instead of two lines like before. Another small change, but this time in Google Maps, when you try to share any place, you will no longer see the custom share sheet like before, but it now uses the native share sheet of the OS. Next, Google Wallet. 
And the first change is the addition of the payment cards in the app shortcuts menu so you can quickly access a specific card from your home screen. The second change is under the wallet settings. When you scroll down a bit, you will see a new toggle called automatically add linked passes. It says here, allow pass providers to automatically add related event tickets, promotions, offers, and more to your existing passes. And if you want to learn more about the feature, you can tap on this link. It says here that the feature is in beta and it may not be available for all passes. It happens automatically and you don't have the option to manually link passes. These are the ones that support the features and these are the ones that do not support it. Next, the Google phone app. The first change is the much bigger answer and decline buttons in the call notification. The second change, you might see a slightly better animation when you tap on any of your reasons to expand the options. And lastly, if the app automatically detected the business name, when you tap and hold on the recent item, you will see this new improved caller ID option, which will ask you if the name matches Google's database or not. When you tap on no, it will ask you for the correct name. Talking about businesses, now when you search for a place on google.com, you will see this slightly redesigned overview tab. First, it has brand new icon and it will give you more information from Google Maps like the public transport at 28 minutes, drive 6 minutes and so on. The second change, the currently active tab got this new fill color around it instead of using a horizontal line under the word like before. So these are the app specific changes, but I would like to show you one more change not related to a specific app, but you will see it in pretty much all Google apps which is the new progress bar that has this scattered design to match the material design three. You will see it in quick share and also in Google play store. You will see a gap here and a dot at the end of the progress bar. I can also see it in Google photos and many other apps. So that's pretty much it for today. Those are all the new changes I wanted to show you. Please let me know in the comments if you spotted any new change in Google apps to include in my future episodes. But for now, thanks so much for watching and see you in the next video.